Hey, how we doing, everybody? How we doing? Ooh. Some last minute, some um, last minute tweaking this morning, but uh, we're here. We're here, and um, the stream deck is working. But uh, it's only working because I've had to reprogram the whole thing this morning. So fingers crossed, everything should work-ish. Hopefully, it will. Anyway. So how are we all doing? We've got Santosh was in, said hello earlier. I'm sure Santosh is still about from India somewhere. Aaron is in. Bright but overcast Penzance. Well, it was raining here just now, but I think it's just sort of gone over now, but still pretty, not very nice out there anyway. Harp's in, watching on his Epson video goggles. Now, I don't know what that is, Harp, but sounds good. Sounds good. It's like being in the, th the theatre waiting for the next block, Radio Crutcher blockbuster. Get on the side every day. Is my camera sharp or is that a bit fuzzy? I might be, <coughs> I might be focused in a bit close there, but the more I mess with it, the worse, worse it tends to get. Yeah, that's worse. I've got to go the other way, am I? <laughs> oh, well, well that'll, that'll have to do. Mm, not sure. Afternoon, Dwayne from Tennessee. Welcome, mate. Timothy's in. Hi, Timothy. Russ, 2E0SFC. Dwarf, hello, Dwarf. I'm definitely a bit washed out there. I'll alter, alter that in a minute. Rob, <laughs> good afternoon, mate. Thanks for the super chat. It is a nice looking radio, so uh, it is working. It is working now. After we messed about with this Tabista last week, that was a journey that was, wasn't it? What a thing that is. So welcome, Rob Matambly. Uh, good morning, mate. From snowy Colorado, eh? Uh, Michael Hyde. Aston's in, and it is St. George's Day. You are right, Aston. Well spotted there. Petronic Snick. How you doing, mate? No snow? Mike Cass. Hi, Mike. Wet, wet, wet. I would, I would try singing the song, Mike, but everybody would just switch off, so best not do that. <laughs> Rob Titheridge, hi Rob. Thomas, how are you and Susie? Chris, hi Chris. Chris Milky, that is. Mick McGinn, afternoon Mick. Multi, hi Multi. Oh, it's a bit of a jump there. Ooh. Colin's in, hi Colin. Jess, afternoon Jess. Yeah, RTE1. And yeah, there is a bizarre national alarm thing going off in the UK to today at three o'clock, which is a bit bizarre. I'm going to need to alter my uh, camera, so apologies for this. Yeah, fuzzy, fuzzy. I don't know which way I've got to go with it. The problem is I've I got to reach, reach up, adjust the camera, then sit back. No, that's the wrong way. I could stick it in autofocus, but then it'll focus on everything but me well, that, that's better that's better <laughs> i've got it on a very wide open aperture so is it? Mm. maybe i need to just sit back a bit perhaps <laughs> uh derek cooper hi derek did where's the finger no finger today i thought i'd have a change today and get some local stuff did Aidy, hi Aidy. Oh, Harvey's in again. Oh no. Barry Charney, hi Barry. Dave Rhodes, hi Dave. Danish is in. Benji's in. Retro Tech, Christoph's in. You're in focus. I'm in, I'm in focus, but you're a bit fuzzy, but I got that wrong, wrong way around then. Andy B, afternoon to you. Bob Anderson, hi Bob. Did the back recover? It's it's a lot better, Bob, to be fair, but I've twisted it a little bit this morning. Uh, well, not this morning. Yeah, just before lunch, clearing up this mess in here. So I twisted it a little bit. So it's a bit, bit tweaky at the moment, but it's a damn sight better, Bob, so thanks for asking. Andrew Littleboy, afternoon, mate. You're diagnosed with asthma at the young age of 43. Very strange. 
Mrs. Cruncher um, apparently has got asthma according to the uh, doctor's surgery, but um, she hasn't. So there you are. Jeer, good afternoon, mate, from Norway. And uh, we're playing with Jeer's radio again today. Derek Taffman, hi, Derek. Spud Vision for Benji. Russy B, afternoon, Russ. From the right account. Ah, okay, you were the 2E0, Russy, were you? SFC, I think it was, from memory. Ken from Bournemouth, welcome, Ken. Everyone's disabled the emergency alert. I think we've got to hear it, Andrew. We've got to hear it, haven't we? You're doing the London Marathon from your bedroom. <laughs> oh, dear. I like that. London Marathon from your bedroom. Dave KI, or KL, also sneaky watching. Welcome to Sneaky Watch, Dave. But welcome, mate. And Mark J. Afternoon, Mark. Uh, tornado tests. Anyone caught the new COVID? I don't think we want any new COVID. You were waiting for the finger door, were you? Oh. Your phone's connected to your Alexa, so if it's off, Alexa picks up your calls. I wouldn't know how to do that, um, Benji, but sounds interesting. <laughs> Yes. Um, so yeah, no, we haven't got so uh, we haven't got some um, the finger today. We are in jail today. I say this is local because this is this is brewed by Dartmoor Breweries uh, up on up on Prince Town, and they've been brewing there according to this since 1994. So apparently it's in Station Road. I've never seen it, but um, apparently it's in Station Road. 4.8% and uh, it is a rather nice beer. It used to be a bit stronger than that. I'm sure it used to be 5 point something, 5.8, something like that. But um, it's a bit tamer than it used to be, but still quite nice. You can just turn off the emergency option or get an old phone. Yeah, you're right. Jail. You've got you to get into jail, um, Dwarf. You've got to try some jail, mate. It's good for you. Don't spend too long in there, though, yeah. But no, it is a good beer, that. I do like this one. And the other one I got is Exmoor. So uh, we've got Dartmoor and Exmoor today. Both of the national parks in uh, Devon. So keeping it local, staying off the finger today. Penguin, a penguin, he was playing up just now. He tried to bite me hand when I picked him up. So he's, he's still down on the floor at the moment. <laughs> Good old penguin. Yeah, he tried to pet me hand just now. It's only because I touched his, his bottom again, trying to, trying to switch his switch on. He, he got a bit feisty. <laughs> so yeah, penguin is here. He is giving me the eye. Uh, so Benji's saying it only works on some networks. You're with EE and it works for me. I'm on O2, um, Benji, so I don't know. Andy B said everyone's rushing out for JLL. Oh. It is good stuff. It is good stuff. Highly recommended. They do do uh, they do a few actually. They do. Um... I'm trying to think if Dartmoor Brewery does does. Um... No, I think that's another one that does the Beast. I don't think is that. That's Exmoor the Beast. I think. Is it Legend? They do. I'm not sure now. We'll have to look it up now. I'm gonna have to look it up now. Yes. Yeah, um... Is a nice point that. <clears throat> Apparently, this this alert is supposed to be um, supposed to be coming on even if you're 
even if your phone's on silent apparently we're still going to get the alert now my phone is on silent here beside me so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens so let's see if this this is working now i should be able to go to screen now hopefully that's worked yes it has look here we go dartmoor brewery then so jll which is what we've got here our original beer and legend yeah the legend is served at our local pub very nice pint not quite as strong as a jail but there's not a lot of difference between them is there in strength i'm sure this did used to be stronger i don't know if it tell us that's and that's a picture of dartmoor prison in the background there look for anybody that fancies a visit <laughs> you've got to be a naughty boy to get in there though it doesn't say much about it it's won some awards in 2021 by the looks of it so there are the beers legend Dotmore IPA and Dotmore Best. The specials. Dragon's Breath and Three Hairs. Never, never tried that. So really their strongest one is JL, which I'm having now. So there you are. Dotmore Brewery. Yeah, the brood in um, HMP wants to know. It's HMP Princetown, it is, Dids. It's um, a, a Dartmoor Prison. I'm just trying to think of the name of it. And a Dartmoor Prison is in Princetown, so that's what they've named it after. Because there is, uh, there is a prison there. You have to rig up an emergency Claxton when your tea bags are getting low. <laughs> Derek's to go directly to jail. Do not pass go and do not collect 200. That's an interesting year. So it looks like over in Norway, they're, uh, they've been doing a national alarm twice a year. Not yet on the phones. I think it's done through the 4G network, and I struggle to get 4G here. So unfortunately, if there's a pending typhoon or whatever, then we won't get it. Seen if there's any um anything on here? No, no. Uh, Peter, afternoon, mate. If you're just telling me off on on the messages for for get, for being drunk, I can't get drunk on two, Peter. I need a fair few. Your brother's been caught with no tax and with your insurance. That's going to be expensive for him, Andrew. One beer, two beer, or ten beers. <laughs> no, I've only got two here today, Peter. I was saying, uh, I got work. I've got to be up at six o'clock in the morning. So, unfortunately, on a Sunday now, I can't, um, I can't go mad. But I can have a couple, can't I, with you lot? So, cheers, everybody. Very nice. Now, I did used to live on Dartmoor. I used to live in Morton Hampstead, and our local pub um, did Jell L on tap. That was very nice. Live beer. <laughs> so, today we've got to um, carry on with this lovely Tanberg sent over by um, Jir all the way from Norway. So, once I can get the, all of the jail in, we've got a hair in the Hair in the beer. Once we get all the gel in the in the pot, then uh, we can crack on. You'll keep an eye on me. Yeah. If I reach for a third, you've got to tell me off. You don't have four Gs. But you have GGs. <laughs> Very good, Harvey. <laughs> and you think they take a car off you as well? That's not going to be good, then, is it? I've never been done for no insurance. Um, I got I got a ticket for no no tax once I think, but um, that was back in the day. Whereas if you got stopped, you just nip in the post office and get get it backdated. 
to um, before the time that you got stopped and you were good, good to go. So you, I mean, mine had only just like literally run out the week before. I forgot all about it. Got stopped and like, you know, taxes out is a ticket to produce your documents within so many days. You know. Welcome back, Rob. Didn't know you were gone, mate. So, yes, that's, um, make sure all the jail's in. We're in jail. Jail's in. Have another quick swig of that. And we'll get the now infamous TP41 back in. So, if you didn't see last week's stream, then you're probably going to wonder what the hell's going on today, but, um, this is a very, very nice wooden cased radio sent in by Gia from um, Norway. And um, one of the issues is this Stabista thing. Now, we spent a lot of time messing about and ended up in the end putting a diode and a capacitor in, which did the job. Uh, tried all sorts of other things, and there was lots of controversy about which was the right way round. And which one to use and all the rest of it but i think we decided on the led because it was less sensitive to heat than a three three diode arrangement so we're only using one led and that's given us pretty much the correct voltage drop there so uh, that's done uh, other things we did we glued the ferrite back together that is that is fine that has stayed glued it is dead straight, so I've got a good join on that. And you'll see this green patch here where I put some new copper on because that stabister had leaked onto the board and uh, corroded away the copper on the back. And um, we had an uh, open circuit there, and there's also a, a capacitor here that had, um, uh, had a dry joint on it. So I've done a fair bit of work so far. And um, what's left to do really is the capacitors, especially these ones down here in the amplifier stage. There's quite a few here. We've got one, two, three, four in that section. Uh, we've got, there's another one over here, five, six. So we haven't got a lot to do, actually. There's only six I can see there. Then, then what I want to do is give it a good service, and I need to just free up the the tuning control for AM. It's fairly stiff, but it's not too bad, to be fair. To do that, we've got to pop the top off to get in there, I believe. And apparently there's something, there's a little flag on the FM tuner that you've got to be careful with. So I need to make sure that that's uh, all okay. There's a very unusual arrangement here for um, AM fine tuning, and it's done by this little piece of wire that runs in this in a spiral. So it allows you to use the FM um, knob to fine tune AM. So we're going to try all that later. But first things first, we need to get the um, caps done. Hopefully I've got them. I had some capacitors delivered by CPC on Saturday morning, which I haven't even opened yet. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they're, they're here. Hair of the dog. It could be, it is very good. I see what you're doing there. You have to get your dinner, okay. Luigi, good afternoon to you. Heidelberger, Schloss Quell Kolsch, English beer. No, what on earth is that, Hans Peter? A passion filled show, a good one, yeah, I know. Where's, where's Les today? He's hiding Les today. Les, Les felt a bit, a bit put out last week. He, was, he got a bit worked up, Les. But we, we got there in the end. We got there in the end. 
Afternoon, Mike. How are you? Okay, mate. You're out shopping, are you? Catch you later, mate. John, how you doing? Get the beers in. John Turner sent me a very nice present, which you can't see yet, because I've got to pop some pictures over to Patreon and the channel members later on just to show you what some... Um, what John has uh, sent me. Very nice bit of kit. Uh, 1.2 reference diodes. Yes, 1.5 volts, Danish. Very strange thing. Sun has just come in. Penzance. Very nice. Paul Crespo. Afternoon, Paul. How are you? I did see your video pop up there, um, Timothy, but I haven't been able to watch a, a lot this weekend. It's been really busy. Went down to see the uh, family. Or went up to see the family. Down, down, up. Up to see the family yesterday. So uh, am I ready for the, today's emergency alert? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on the phone, Aaron. There's Les. Afternoon, Les. Heidelberg, not heard of that one, um, Peter. I should have to look that one up. Yeah, I can do that for you, Chris. I've got a couple here, actually. I've got three here. I've got a brown, a brown cased old style case. I've got a green old style cased one, and I've got a like denim coloured newer style case one. So I've got three of them here, I believe. Right, let's fire up the... I was going to clean out the desolder tool because you can bet your life that... Um, I'm going to go to try and use this and then it's not going to work. So I think we'll give it a bit of a clean out before, before I do it. Bacho, how are you doing, mate? I've not seen you for ages. Sandra. <laughs> Welcome, Sandra. Ben's computer is not sending chats. No worries. We'll put up with you, Sandra. No problem at all. And uh, Ben and Sandra sent me a nice little gift, actually, that arrived yesterday. So I shall have to go and get that in a minute and show you. Let's clean this monster off a minute. I've got a nice clean bench as well, which is a bit of a shame, because this is usually quite messy. Let's take that off for a minute. Let's just pop that out. Come on, get out. Gonna empty that bit out into the into the bin. Which is this oh damn, he says tipping it all over his bench look. Oh no, because it is quite full actually. Let's just stick that in the bin. Good old lead. Body must be full of lead to be fair. Well, that's the worst of it in the bin, but. Oh no. Oh no, I think I've dropped the silver bit in the bin. No. Oh no. There's a little silver bit that um, caps off and it looks like I've just chucked that in the bin. Oh dear. That means I've got to go bin diving now. Radio Cruncher live bin diving. You can't, you can't plan for stuff like this, can you? Live, live bin diving. Gun is useless without that, to be fair. <clears throat> Where the hell has that gone to then? I don't believe this. Luckily, the bin is pretty empty because I emptied it last, last week and I haven't really done a lot in the workroom this week most of my repairs are up to date i've got some um, a very 
interesting car media system in to do next. What the hell have I done with that? No, where are you? Well, I've gone bin diving, but I can't find it. Is it on the floor? Did I put it on the bench somewhere safe? Hmm. Definitely not here. I've got to find it. Can't use it without it. Going in deep now, you can hear me in the bin. Crunchers in the bin. <laughs> I had a bit of a man look just now, you know. I did think it would be easy to find, but it's not the case. appear to be in the bin does not appear to be in the bin must have dropped off on the way to the bin but I can't see it what a pain in the back side Well, I'm going to have to get another, um, another gun out, aren't I, I think. Why did I decide that I had to change to clean that the right then? I don't know, I'm going to have to have a beer now to c console myself. Well, that's a bit of a bit of a mystery where that bit's gone. It's probably just dropped off and pinged under the f under the desk here somewhere. Potentially, it's just like a silver sort of funny cutaway star-shaped thing. Hmm. Bit of a mystery where that's gone. But no, you don't get spare parts with it, Rob. So don't don't think for a second that you've got some spare parts with yours because you haven't. You've got to buy um buy the spares in. It's fallen onto the radio, is it? No. Nope. Right, let's have a look see what I've got up here. What have I got up here? No, I thought that was a gun, but it's not. Now I'm not sure if this is a spare gun or a new gun. is a brand new gun so we've got the silver bit in that one but I'm sure I've got a new chamber here somewhere so this is my bag of spares for these because you need a lot of spares for these they're not great they're um they're very helpful if you do a lot of 
these silvering, but they're not very well made, unfortunately. So let's, let's put that back up there. So it pays to keep all the um, bits if you ever get one of these that breaks. You can bet your life you're going to need the bits from it. So it looks like in there I may have Yes. I have one. <laughs> oh yes. What pain though. In fact I've got two. I've got uh, that one's that one looks like a used one. I've got another one there that so that's a bit I'm missing, that cross shaped piece, look. That silver bit's what I've dropped somewhere. So we use this one. I think this is out of my old gun, this one. But I kept the parts, luckily. And that's the bit I need. So you can you can order a new chamber from CPC. They do they do sell these, and they're well worth picking up a spare one because. They do get to the stage where they get so mucky you can't clean them. Let's put my spare gun away. So again, you can buy a spare gun complete. You can buy you can buy new elements for them, which are a pain in the neck to fit, but you can buy them. <laughs> Be nice to have a pace, but you need um, you need four figures to buy a pace desoldering gun, or a Metcal even is even better. But you know. now I've got to put all that back, but I also need another filter. I did have some spare filters I kept here, but. Looks like I've decided not to keep them there now. Right, got there in the end. Let's get typing for radios. He pulled a Sansui 881 from the neighbor's bin. Nice. <laughs> Radio Raccoon. Catch up with the chat. New gun is like the old gun, yeah, exactly the same, Badger. Right. So I need to get another filter. Again, you need to get some spare filters if you've got one of these guns, you'll know why. And uh, I did have some up on top here, I swear I had some ready to go, but they probably got knocked off the side and dropped down the side, I suspect. Everything else here. Let's get some more of those then. Gonna keep lots of packs of those. Because they get clogged up for a pastime. Mm. 
Also spare nozzles for the desoldering gun because they don't last very long either. These don't last uh, very long at all. So well, we're picking up some more of those. They do them in three different sizes. So you'll need one of each at least. It's all good stuff in it, right? We will get around to doing some desoldering in a minute. Let's rebuild this thing. I need to clean that out because that's filthy. Yeah, I don't think you can see through that, can you? It's very filled with solder residue. You can't see through that at all. It's absolutely filthy. So there's no wonder I can't see whether it's full up or not. We'll get around to doing some uh, capacitors in a minute. It's all good fun. Right, blue row. Isopropyl. You will need some spare tips because they do wear out, so. Like Colin says, it depends what you're doing, but I would just get a couple of each size in as a spare. Every time I order spares for this, I always order more. Always make sure I've got at least one element in for the desoldering gun. I'm on about my fourth element now for this one. But as I say, it does get a lot of use. So the more you use it, the quicker it, um, it fails. And we did modify this one to get rid of that horrible fan, didn't we? I need a hacker would be lovely, Andrew, but unfortunately funds will not, will not run to a hacko. Uh, you know, they, I haven't had any sponsorship deals coming through from Hakko. You think I would, don't you? <laughs> How does the UK have so many old radios? Well, they're sort of getting them from everywhere, um, Badger, really. And this one's been sent to me from um, Jir in Norway. Um, the Grundigs are German. But um, I think what, the thing with the UK is we, we sort of held off of the Japanese market for a lot longer than the US. And um, as a consequence, we, we got a lot of British made radios from the sort of start of radio manufacture right up into the 80s and 90s. And uh, I've got a lot of radios, Badgers. <laughs> I'm, I'm not normal. You know, not everybody in the UK has quite so many radios as this. <laughs> in fact, I don't think anybody has, but, you know. Gonna have to have a clear out at some stage. I would have liked to have taken a load up to the NVCF, but um, don't think I know what retro tech or whatever it's called now. I don't think I'll be going this year. Right. We are in. This is the hardest bit is getting this in. Correct without chewing up the filter which I've just done, so that's not right. Let's give that a wipe off with the isopropyl because that's really dirty as well. Let's try that again. better that time. So get that in there without it. I 
There, how about that? That looks a bit cleaner, doesn't it? Give that a little nip up with the spanner. I so say I've got a couple of videos out there on rebuilding these things, so if anybody's uh, got one with an element gone, then you'll have to look my video up. Right, let's get a bit cleaner here. Let's get rid of that. I really don't know where that other silver bit's gone, but it's gone somewhere. Bit of isopropyl. And get the big wipes in for me hands. These are really good, so uh, we sell these in work. They are uh, very popular. They will actually get paint off your hands as well, which is uh, very good. Love you, how are you, mate? see inside it metabolic I know it's a miracle I'm just getting all this lead off my hands nasty stuff lead you don't want that in your system really it does get through your skin so just to clean off there got lead all over my phone right back in the room You haven't got one, Andrew. What's the hat? Oh, you, I need, you haven't got a hacker either. <laughs> I had a little jar for um, emptying mine into Benji, but since I've had the desoldering tool, I haven't really used it. I'll tell you what, since I've just cleaned that, it's heated up a hell of a lot quicker. So there we are, ready to go. Tips tinned. Let's get desoldering. So let's get the um, this one here out first. I believe it's marked on the board, which is which. So this one is one of the ones that was dry jointed. Let's get in a bit closer. So you can see the little LED that I put in last week. And we just desoldered this one. Is it marked on the board? Yes, it is. So yeah, this one, if you can see on the board there, if I can get it on, it does, does look like it may have leaked. There's like a shiny coating on the inside there. Give that a bit of a clean up before I stick a new one in. So it might be electrolyte, you never know. And what is this one? This is a thousand microfarads at 10 volts. It's quite big for a 10 volt, isn't it really? Let's find another one then. <clears throat> Oh, this is one of these sizes that I should have picked up, and I don't know if I have. Uh, what are these? 6.3 volts. God, I don't really want to use these. 
16 volt a thousand I could use those potentially do I want to, do I want to go up to, to 50 volts <laughs> I thought I got some of those Thousand at twenty five volts. There we go. That's one. Is that other one a thousand as well? well? I think the other one's a thousand, so I'm probably going to need both of those. Just caught the uh, microphone in time there before it blew your ears off. Sneezing. So that shuffle of my. Oops. I sort of keep these back because these are really th these are thin but tall. So these are good for restuffing things. These are quite um quite chunky. Uh, what are they? 16 volts, so these are 25. But this is a better footprint. In fact I could uh, no, I haven't got any. That's that one. Just solder that in. That would help if I switch my soldering iron on. Put a smaller tip in it. Let's keep going. I've missed loads of chat. I've missed loads of chat, so. Uh... You certainly do, Chris. <clears throat> Have you ever had cold beer? Yeah, I, th I mean, I drink lager cold, Bajo. Guinness, Guinness is cold. Lead isn't good for the brain. That could explain a lot. Yeah, the big orange sponge up in the right is... Um, is a very weird um, thing for fine tuning the shortwave. It's a, a like a sponge donut. It is. You've been sneezing as well as oh, that's a hay fever, isn't it? Right. I'm going to stick a bit of flux on this because um, it's not got very, very big um, pads on there for soldering, really. Let's put the extractor on. down oh not very straight though. is that straight or no that one's drunk that's why 
The next one is here. Let's get a little desolder on that. Working a treat now, it's been cleaned, I tell you. It makes a big difference. Also, another thousand, but this time at 12 volts. So we're going to stick that one back in, which is a 60, no, 25 volt, these are. That's a bit mucky as well. good let's say this 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 does work but uh, these caps are known to be not great so that's why I'm changing them plus they are pretty old or this rated to be say 1971 was it yeah so you want a bit of flux on that ideally let's make sure the joints flow properly let's get the Extractor back in. Better. So we should certainly be doing a bit of capacitor bingo. I don't know who said that, but we're going to have a try, aren't we? Another one in there. I'm surprised there's not a lot of electrolytics in this. So where is that one? Is it there and there? Might be there and there. Maybe not. Where are we? And there, is it there? Yeah. Okay, so we just desoldered the wrong thing. What have we got here? Sprague. 10. That's 63 volts. Well, it's a 9 volt radio, so 16 volt will be fine. And it looks like I am nearly out of 10 at 16 volts. I can't believe that. That's my like most common. Actually, I've got a 10 at 50 volts. Look, let's use that. Worth German. Good stuff. Let's pinch one of them. I must stick that on my list then. 10 at 16 volts if I'm already gone. And I don't know where my notebook is, so won't be doing that. A little clean. Must remember to um I must remember to can't even see where I'm on the peel that. Must remember to solder those other ones back as well. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I'm confusing myself then.
That's that one. And the other one is stuck up there. And where is that one too? Could be there and there. Right first time. Even if I was in shot there. Yeah, there he is. See what that is. Can't grip it. Two point two. Says at a hundred volts, but that's not right. Uh, let's clean that. So I'm sure there's loads of stabister juice all over this. Some holes are drilled out really large for this, I'm not here, so you can't really see again. doing there now Lee how are you doing mate ready for the uh, government's thingamajiggery poo one minute so something should happen any minute should get a red alert red alert live anything gonna happen there you go look look So, I mean, I'm on silent, but there you go. How about that? I've got a mucky screen because I just wiped that off just now. Look. There you go. Live alert, everybody. Whoa. All right, let me catch up. Michael Hamilton, how are you, Michael? Let me just catch up. You think I'm losing it? I've lost it. I lost it years ago. Are we? Sounds like it's time for the tea. Duress the eyeballs. How you doing, Lee, anyway, mate? Fracos, um, usually good stuff, as uh, as Benji said. Fraco, Fraco, I'm not sure. John Hurd, hi John, how are you, mate? You have been well. Oh, you haven't been well, John. Sorry to hear that, mate. You've got another radio for me to fix, have you? No problem. I was in Seth Moulton yesterday, John, actually. 
I'm coming back through from um, from Bridgewater. Could have popped in and got it like. So Gia's interesting there is that 63 volt cap is more linear in value at low voltages than what a 10 volt cap would be. Interesting, yeah. Oh, hang on, it's, it's jumped. It's jumped now. Oh dear, it's jumped. <laughs> What's Michael saying? If you got to solder one of the legs of a capacitor, it had quite the little light show inside the radio. And to change your shorts. Rich, how are you, mate? Nuclear war st has started. Yours went off at 259. Andy Beck, all right, Andy. Phones and tablets went off. I don't know if my tablet, my tablet didn't go off because it's not connected to um, 4G. I think it's got to be connected to the phone network to work, hasn't it? That was a bit of a flop. Oh, well. Sean's in. Sean, are you with us? Or are you back in the country? Mr. Man Cave. Yours was in Welsh, Lee. You got your tests every Wednesday afternoon. Alexa didn't pick it up. Wow. Multi's still waiting. What's code? George, how you doing, mate? Beer is much better. You will hate Joe Biden. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Michael, but I don't, don't usually get get uh, political in here. But um, it's good to hear your thoughts, mate. Two <laughs> G doesn't get it. No alert for you, Phil. How you doing, Phil? <clears throat> oh, welcome back, Sean, anyway. Three G's going soon. Well to be fair, we we haven't we've got barely got four G here, so it's lucky to get that really. Hope you had a good time, Sean. Sean's been on his wayward travels. Okay, so that's the four done in the amplifier section, by the looks of it. I don't see any more. It's unusual, isn't it? When you look at a hacker amplifier, you've normally got about ten in there, haven't you? Well, not so much on the newer ones. So it looks like we've only got a couple more to do. Is that right? One in there. One there. I wonder if there's any in the FM box. Well, we don't want to go in there, do we? That's a bad place. We don't want to be in there. We do not want to be going in there unless we absolutely got to. Can't see physically any electrolytes. We will have a look on the diagram in a minute just to see. But, um... Let's get these two out first. Let's deal with that one first, because it's the biggest one. It's in there. <coughs> so look what that one is. Four seventy at twelve volts. They didn't warn you, are VR. Well, what can I say? I mean, you've got to be in it to win it, Harvey. A lot of 470s here. 
470, 35 volts, 50 volts. How many volts was it? 12 volts. I just got a load of 470s at 10 volts. Typical of that. And they are long legged ones. So it's going to be. Thirty five volt. Mm, that one's a bit, um tricky to get in there because it's too close to the switch bank. I could sort of leave it sticking out but I don't like that. So really I'm going to need probably an axial. Mm. Let's have a look then. What have we got in the 470 uh, flavour? We want 16 volts. There we go, 470, 16 volt. Got stuff everywhere now, absolutely everywhere. So let's go that way. It's going to look a bit better. I'm just going to give it a bit of space. It's a bit close. That's better. And now, not quite like that, Michael. Not quite like that. Got back at 4 a.m. 5G would be nice here, I'll tell you. Turn that off a minute. Yeah, 5G would be very nice. Did you bring me back some Turkish Delight? Um, sure, I love the Turkish Delight. Seem to have more 470s left than any other value. Six minutes late, flipping heck. Yes, it's, it's a government warning thing, Rob, that um, some new thing that they've just come out with. To warn us of imminent doom. Some nice quality caps in this thing, to be honest. It's no wonder they were good. I mean, spray caps are very good. It's for the sprakes. Is that it there, I wonder? Yeah. 
almost a shame to take them out, but they are going to be at the end of their life for sure. Your phone says 4G, but you're still waiting. Perhaps your alerts are turned off. 10 microfarad, 63 volts again. Um, now, let me think. What did I put in there last time? I put in these, didn't I? I put in a, a worth. For what it's worth, I put in a worth. About the air raid, air raid silence. It is only in the UK, Rob. Of course, it is. Fallout shower. We've got plenty of spades here, Sean. You know, no worries, mate. I can hook you up with a spade. Right, that's the caps done as far as I can see. All the electrolytics done. It just doesn't seem like there's enough of them, you know? There's a lot of non polarized, lower value caps, so, mind you. So. Maybe that's one of the reasons why it's such a good sound. But um, Gio was pointing out this um, this bit of foam in here. Now there's uh, there's an inductor there, and this rod here moves around this spiral when you tune. So can you see that moving around that spiral? And that is actually fine tuning the AM by moving this. Um, moving this bit of wire that's stuck on that foam it's only fractionally moving it it's not moving it hardly anything to be fair see in fact it's difficult to see it moving at all but it is moving very very slightly i suppose the foam's just to stop it rattling around can't really see it there can you so that's fully compressed and that's uncompressed so that's how they achieve the fine tuning on um, on shortwave using the FM tuner because we've got two separate buttons there look this is long medium and short waves and this is FM but it's got Delta S on it so this is fine tuning very clever it's certainly uh, something that hacker never had As you're living off slugs. Line the shed with, with lead. They used to give you goiter. What on earth is goiter pills?
Uh, it's got to be a different, a ver specific version of Android, is it? I don't know what mine is, to be fair. Mine needs upgrading, really. Potassium iodide tablets? Hell. Oh. Four headed slugs? What? What's going on? Very decorative tuning cord. <laughs> fiber is the way to go, Derek. I wish I had fiber here, mate. You got the alert. Well done. David's got it. I've got the jail in me. Right. That's that done. Other jobs to do then. We've got some potentiometers to squirt. Very easy to get to those by the looks of it. We've got to give the tuning gang a little bit of lube. I don't know whether this has got its own tuning gang, or whether it's, it's for actors. I think it might be for actors on FM. Yeah, we don't want to be taking the FM box apart, do we, really? The decorative dial cord, you mean the stripey colour, Sean? Or the spirally bit. So that's that's the spiral look. So that rod there, that rod just moves that that um, bit of wire up and down that bit of foam. So if I turn that though, you can see it spiraling. In and in and in and in. So it's not moving much as you can see, but it is changing enough to just give you that extra little bit of fine tuning. Very clever. Nice little touch, isn't it, really? <clears throat> so we need to give this um, tuning cap a little bit of lube. No. Going to have to be really careful with this because we don't want to lubricate anything too much. I'm going to use the deoxit that Doug gave me, if I can find it. Everything is here, somewhere. I'll never find it when I want it. <laughs> there we go. I must get another couple little um, little. What do you, what do you call those? Tube. Couple, I need a couple more little tubes of this because I have used quite a lot. You can see I've not got a huge lot left in either of them now. But you can get this as like a sample pack, which is quite, it's not cheap. <laughs> I think I was going to say quite cheap. It's not cheap. It's a damn sight cheaper. So I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of this on the blades down there that ground the stator. There. I'm going to put a little tiny bit on the bearing, if I can get it in there, down there. I don't know if that's actually gone in. No. I think I just ran down over to be fair. This just needs a that went in. That one in that time. Oh, let's put it up on my jumper. OK. 
Okay, I've now lost the black top. Just there. Evening, Richard, how are you? Dawn, good day to you, Dawn. How you doing, mate? These upgraded to Virgin Media, £30 a month. Sean's just loving the cord. Right, so now can I get at the top of that to lubricate that without taking the top panel off? No, I can't. Do I need to take the top panel off? Just pop that off and see if I can get it in there. Just going to pop the knobs off and see if I can get inside the top. Apparently there's an FM bit of plastic in here that's very dodgy, so just pops up off I believe there so something's still hanging up here somewhere There we are. Well, that came off fairly painlessly. So now we can see all our pulley mechanism and I cannot get in there. Yeah, we certainly don't want to be taking this we certainly don't want to be taking this white piece off because that's got all of the pulleys and everything mounted on this. So if you took this off, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. So we don't want to be touching that, that's for sure. So how am I going to get in there? Okay, do that prize up a little bit maybe? Nope. I might be able to get some oil down there. Let's have a look. How on earth can you get in there? I'm just going to have to get it in from this side. I can't get in the other side at all. Right. Time to... Uh, time to have a comfort break. You're not in the pub. Jamie P, how are you doing, mate? I have, Jamie, yeah. I have, um, occasionally. In fact, I did, I did that... Um, in one of the Christmas streams, I think. If there's anything you want to see, mate, just let me know. Let's have a quick comfort break. Or point Percy at the porcelain, whatever you want to call it. Drain the snake and all the, all the other innuendos.
Right. It's coming back in the room. Seventy pound a month. Shake it hands with the unemployed. I'm going to shoot off, shall I? <laughs> it's possible to remove the tuning cap, just two screws, a few wires, and carefully loosen the dial wheel. Slide a screw into the dial wheel as you remove the shaft from it. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think it was Jamie. Um, I can't remember now. I think we just had a bit of a chit chat, but um, if there's anything you want to see, mate, just say. It's all around me. I did a, a quick video go around of all my tools and bits and pieces. So do you think it's easy enough to remove the tuning cap? Two screws, so I can see there's a screw there. I sold it to the board though, isn't it, by the looks of it as well. No, I don't think we're, we're going to need to do that. I should be able to get in there with, I've got quite a long point on my um, lubricating tool. So I'm just wondering if I can get down in there. <clears throat> yeah, that would be a bit tricky to um, get all that taken off. And see me back out a bit. I'm in a bit close, really, aren't I? I was in close just showing you the soldering, but... Um, I think it's that screw there maybe and that one there it does look like it's soldered to the board as well in a couple places so yeah more than a bit tricky to get off can I get in there I wonder can see where I go. Oh, this is the problem. Is this thing is a bit blobby. Just stuck some oil on the sponge there. We don't really want oil on our sponge, do we? It might do it good, mind you, but unlikely. So we're going to have to try and sort of go in like this somehow. I 
hopefully that went in there. It went in somewhere anyway. See, some of these pulleys aren't moving either. The pulley there wasn't moving. It is now. I think we're good. Oh, let's give it a little wiggle. Yeah, that is better already. That wheel there is just not moving at all, that one. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to mess with that anymore. Okay. What else do we need to do? We need to do a bit of switches. Sean! Thank you, mate. Too many innuendos. Okay, cheers, Jamie. Thanks for dropping in, mate. Birthday soon, Rob. You've been telling us about your birthday for about a year. <laughs> oh, dear. So cheers for the super chat, Sean. Glad to have you back, mate. Let's get some beer out. Let's get let's get the next um let's get the next next national park underway, shall we? Because we're uh, we've gone from Dartmoor Breweries to Exmoor. Exmoor Ales now. Thanks, Rob. And we're going with a stag. This is quite a st well, stronger, five point two percent, but um. In our in our local, they do Exmoor Beast on draft, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. Cheers, Chris. Thank you very much, and thanks, Rob, for the radio recapping. Theo, welcome, mate. We haven't seen you for a while. Is everything okay? Talking about people we haven't seen for a while, I hope, um, hope Mike's doing okay. Mr. Racing Demon, uh, not a bit, bit poorly at the moment, Mr. Racing Demon, so we wish you all the best, Mike, if you are watching. 
Cheers, Rob. Extra. So, Exmoor Brewer, I think it's Dulverton Way, isn't it? Somewhere? Wiveliscombe. Yeah, Wiveliscombe, Dulverton. It's not far off. Originally brewed to celebrate the Somerset County Cricket Club centenary in 1991. Nice. This is a nice beer as well. Stag. Beast is amazing, uh, multi. They do it in the local pub, but um, I had to stay off the Beast on Friday because I had to drive up to Bridgewater on Saturday, so there was no Beast for me on Friday. Um, right, switch cleaning. Switch cleaning and potentiometer cleaning, and then we're going to be giving it a test run and then sticking it back together because all I'll have to do then is um, the case, which I'll do um, when I can work out the best way to do it. I'm thinking um, satin, uh, satin varnish. So cheers everybody. Uh, up the beast. <laughs> up the moor. No ways Theo. Glad to see you mate anyway. So we're going to use Service Soul Super 10 to squirt the old switches. Squirt the switches. We've got a very unusual switch here. What's that one then? That's, what is that? So we've got like a double ganged switch here with a plastic joiner in between. <coughs> so we've got one part of the switch here and one part here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to think what that one is now. So that is our FM switch. So you do tend to find that on most radios, the FM switch has got the most contacts and does the most work. So sometimes you'll find you've got FM working, but not AM, but it's actually the FM switch that's causing the problem. So I'm going to go in here with a switch cleaner. Can I get in that one? And the rest of them. A little tricky one back in there. It does help to have that little bend on the end of your straw. Bend the straw. Welcome back, um, Peter. I think you'll find if you uh, put chat like that in, then you're going to get kicked out, mate. Right, that's the switch is done. Potentiometers. So we're going to use some um, beta lube on those. Just a little tiny blast. Don't think anything came out the first time. It's so those two. Where's our that's our base and travel? Just need the volume next. Can we get in there to the volume? Yes, just I think it's going to be tricky because um, the ferret's in the way. So 
don't think anything came out then. No, that just filled up the top of my can by the looks of it. That worked. <laughs> what are you on about, Peter? <laughs> Clean white beer. Strangling ferrets. <laughs> Right, there we go. Think, I think that's everything done there now. I can certainly put the top plate back on, I think. We don't want any of this dial cord jumping off. Um, Just check that that screw there is tight while we're up here. Yes, it is. Just check that one. Yeah. Always worth checking your screws when you're in the top of a radio. It's also a good chance to clean the buttons. Get rid of the dust and that on them. Let's use one of these. Apologies for the noise. Big old foam pad. side there we are. yeah pretty mucky Doing. Clean them uh, a little bit better. That's not very clean, mind you. Better. Be worth just giving this a wipe over as well while we're at it. Let's be careful with this because we don't want to remove any of this writing. 
just give this channel a little brush. Where these station markers are. to get in there. Paddy, how you doing mate? I'm just going to go in that channel with this, just a bit of isopropyl. any gunk out of there and there's plenty of it in there well that one there might fit in there better better now. Nice little touch station markers. So I think we'll um, remove the worst of it with some of these just bacterial wipes. Wife just told you you stink. That's very nice of it, Danish, isn't it? <laughs> get it better get in the shower. <laughs> so these are pretty surface safe they shouldn't take any text off fingers crossed We take this little label off because it's not anything Tandbergy. We think it may be an auction label or some sort of price label. So that's gone. Overall, it's pretty clean, actually. It's a very nice example that Gia sent me. All the way from Norway, so thanks again, Gia. Right, Rob. that bit done. Let's give it a dry off and a bit of a polish with a microfiber.
that's looking good. There we are. The knobs are going to need a bit of a clean, actually. I've lost one of my knobs. I've got a stray knob. Probably on the floor. That's where everything goes. Though the mystery of the... Um, Desoldering gun top is still here. <laughs> I don't believe it, that knob's gone. I had it here just now. Yeah, these are going to have to go through the ultrasonic, really. Behind the spray can. Oh, well spoiled. Don, you're the man. Oh, and the tambly said it as well. Yeah, no, it's really good. Really good, Nick. Um, yeah, so again, thanks very much for sending me such a cracking example. I mean, I, I assume that they're a bit more common over there than they are over here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, these are going to need to go through the ultrasonic. Let's give him a quick wipe over for now. So I think we'll have to do a bit of a photo shoot with this radio once it's finished and I've done the case because it's a beautiful looking radio. It deserves, uh, deserves a bit of TLC. Phone is filthy now. Clean the phone and it's worse than when you started. Right, Let's stick these back on for now. So I think it's the tuning ones. Mrs. Cruncher on the way out. Yeah. Mrs. Cruncher's off on our travels. Oh, she did say she had to go into town. Thanks and non. <laughs> You're, that's you, Danish. Thank you very much, mate. So we have we have got a new Patreon as well, a new patron this week. A new patron. Patron Patreon. So I've got some photos going up later on channel membership and Patreon. <clears throat> dee, 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 dee. So 
So we have 36 patro patrons at the moment, so thanks to all of you that subscribe on Patreon for me. Most appreciated. And our latest patron is Jan, Jan, I believe you pronounce it, Engstrom. I'm probably, probably not even close to being uh, pronounced correctly, but that's uh, he's in Sweden. So, Jan, welcome, mate, and thanks very much for your support on Patreon. Much appreciated. And you are on the credits at the end now. So uh, anyone that's on Patreon is going to go on the is on the end credits, and most of you that are patrons are also channel members. But I must I must put something on the credits for for the channel members because uh, you you're the same. Well, you're not the same, but you know what I mean. You're supporting the channel, so I think you need to get your names 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 up in light, so to speak. 22nd latency. The tuning knob should have a felt pad to stop them from scratching the aluminium. Yeah, they haven't got that, dear, but um, I might be able to grab a couple. I did have some made, but um, John from John's 3D printing gave me a, some really nice ones for the hackers, but um, I've pretty much used them all up. In fact, there's one left there, I think, isn't it? What sort of size are the knobs? I've got one that I can use. Is that another one? Ah, yeah, I've got a couple there, like that'll do. <coughs> could do with a source for felt knobs. Um, I probably need to get myself a punch, don't I? To do it properly. But these are from hackers. I mean, what are those like? Those white ones are probably better. There's smaller holes in those. I can't, I can't remember where I picked these up from now, but I think they were on eBay somewhere. But why too big? No, the same size as that. I don't know, the white looks a bit naff, doesn't it? But like you say, it's better than a scratched aluminium face. Hmm. Let's try one with the black and compare it. Yeah, black looks better. Shame because the white ones are uh, very nice, brand new, but the black ones are second hand, so they're not great. In fact, that one looks a bit slightly bigger. Yeah. Mm. They need to be slightly smaller than that, really. But like I say, better than scratching the top. It looks like a base and treble, they don't need that, maybe. Yeah, they don't sit right the way down, do they? Well, they do. That one does. Let's just pull it up a fraction. And the volume one is spaced anyway. Because it's got the push button for the light on it. So there we are. It's got his face back on. Got his face back on, look. You can cut them down in size, they only need to fit the inner part of the knob. Now, I have got some felt, but I could do with some punches, really. <clears throat> I've got a punch to do the center, but I haven't got one big enough to do the outer area. Them back out the way. Let's get the rest of me stag in. 
Good beer. What is Odie saying? I don't know, Theo. The white ones don't look right. The egg situation. What's the egg situation? Have we got a national egg shortage now, have we? We're always short of some blimmin' thing, aren't we? Okay, so we're looking good now. Everything's pretty much serviced. New caps. It should sound amazing. So I think what I want to do is get the original speaker in. Which is a monster. Let's connect it up to the original speaker. And it's not going to sound as good as it would. Um, I mean, look at the size of that thing. That's a monster. If I put my hand beside it, look at the size of that thing. Impressive. It does need a damn good brush off. So let me uh, just open the uh, the window. We actually no, I'll just do it into the bin. If I open the window, it's going to blow right back in in my face, isn't it? I'm just using a soft paintbrush. Can I see light through that now? Very soft paintbrush to get rid of the dust. There we go. Soak them with a Sharpie. Yeah, it could do. I don't have a link. Unfortunately, Harvey, I bought them a long, long time ago. <clears throat> Alright, let's connect up the speaker. Hopefully the Stabista is still uh, still with us. Hasn't died overnight. But during the week, the infamous Stabista didn't that caused us a lot of hassle, didn't it? Where's that Les today? He's quiet today, Les. Les very kindly came over and looked after the doggies for us yesterday. Well. Uh, well, we went to see the um, family, sons and fathers and grandchildren and everything. It's all going on yesterday. Right, that's that. I believe it was centre pin nearly. The power supply is still set up. 12 volts. Let's drop the current limit right down just in case it decides to play up. make sure we're we're actually off at the moment because we don't want to blow our ears off that's in there on let's go on fm my fam i've got a I got a copyright here last week because I was stuck on a station for way too long. So I'm trying to think of like what some triggers would be. There's, there's lots, isn't there? A, a horrible news story. Mm. Oh, it's got a much better yeah. base well, now. Has a word to you that uh, reminds you of some like past trauma or something yeah. like someone might say in the past that then you know you developed an insecurity from that sort of thing. Absolutely, stuff like that. So the gloom is the opposite of that. What would some of yours be, Vic? Um, so I, I'm just flowers, really. Like flowers, I love flowers so nice. much. And That's moving some air, that is. Walking and yesterday was a prime example. There was these beautiful tulips in someone's garden. <laughs>
So it's run up to 108 as well. To, to accept not her power, but in, in accepting the power, so accepting herself. Did you have any concerns whatsoever about writing as a woman? No. Um, what, one, because I've written female protagonists before, and two, I write Elizabeth Nunez let me into the secret about writing women. And I think a lot of people think the secret is just get to know as many women as you possibly can. Any woman will tell you sounds that that's, good. You know, it's that's sounding not how good. It works. Um, the secret is, is, is read woman. And uh, I didn't realize what my creative writing teacher was telling me, which is there's some lessons in writing, some fundamental lessons in writing that you're only going to learn through reading. That, um... Is, um, to the rule. I think that's one of the reasons why the char my character is usually speaking first person. Okay. Sort of become this nosy journalist for imagined people. And also you're observing without judgment. Mm -hmm. It's anti-prejudice. Great. Uh, 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 Long wave. Wow. Need to lubricate that aerial. Lights are working. That the other women who have been you know, driven from their communities and their families. That a lot of these um, attempts. Sadly, nothing else on long wave now. Medium wave. Seem to have something in here on that frequency for some reason. I don't know what that is. Is it lights? Not sure. We've got something on just over 700 kilohertz on medium wave. Something in here's got about 700 kilohertz on it somewhere. Short wave. So I think what we need to do is get it hooked up to short wave and um, see if we can uh, get any short wave stations on it. That's sound good though, doesn't it? Hi Graham, how are you? Thanks very much. Sandra, thanks Sandra. It is a nice bit of kit, Sean, isn't it? 
You got stomach issues. Oh, sorry to hear that, um, Les. You're on the pan, are you? You're watching from the pan. Oh, right. Okay, the farmers have said no. They're not sending eggs to the supermarkets. Well, oh, dear, oh, dear. That's not good, is it? Doug, how are you, mate? Welcome. <clears throat> Does sound very nice, doesn't it? Have to be careful with it then, Jeer. It is strong now, it's being let through because before it was being swamped by um, the RTE 1, wasn't it? RTE Radio 1, but now it's out on its own and it's, it does come through quite nice. Uh, thanks, Doug. Uh, Don, even. Thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks for staying up. Mrs. Off to Sydney. Oh, I hope she has a good time, mate. Thanks, Lee. So let we let's um let's try and hook this thing up then. Let's try and hook ourselves up. Let me have another swig of the stag first. And then let me find the um shortwave antenna tuner. is currently attached to the SDR because I hooked the SDR up the other week to record the last few minutes of RTE1, RTE Radio 1 or whatever you want to call it. And I'm trying to think if this has got a shortwave aerial socket. I don't think it has, does it? It's got an aerial socket but that looks like AM. Uh, sorry. FM. But saying that shortwave and FM are the same thing, aren't they? I was just thinking to hook it on to the um, aerial, which I think I'm going to do. I'm not going to mess about it. I'm just going to hook it on. Hook it on into the aerial. I'm just going to hook my antenna tuner up. Rob, I know I can get Africa here. I get it all the time. It's no problem. It's no problem. So I've got um, I've got a plug on it at the moment. It's typical, isn't it? Let's uh, see if we can connect this up. Then I'll, I'll use the ground. I'll ground it as well. See if that makes any difference. Ground it and see if that makes any difference. Right, so we now have an external aerial in. Let's pop it on again. So we're in the 40, 40 meter band. SSB. The fine tuning works. That's amazing.
Shortwave 6225. What is that then? Welcome, Anthony. Okay, well, that noise that you can hear is the damn broadband thing over there. So I'm going to pull that out. Being that Mrs. Crunch has just gone out to town, I can get away with that. And we'll cut our internet off in the, in the prime. We'll cut it off in, our, in the prime. And that should stop all that noise, hopefully. Right, that's the broadband thing out. Turn that back on again and see if we still got all that popping noise. Surprising how it's hash those things. There you go. Much better. So it looks like the 40 metre band is alive at the moment. I'm in the 25 metre band now, if anybody's wondering what the hell I'm doing. Pardon? China.
，便可以从上万亩的尾田里挑选出他创作所需的材料。马上就得奔几个季节，春季的时候那尺度也非常小，叶儿非常嫩，也采集非常肥沃。我们看，我这里做一些图案的里边就需要的内容，比如说茎或者是那个叶，对不对？It does work, but it's not great. It's gone again, look. I don't know if it's just this. Drifting, isn't it? Let's move that into the middle, see if I can get that station again and I can get a good swing either way. So that's tuned now. Gone again. Mm. 
So we're on a station. Okay, okay. So a diamond beginning in the swan has now with a tarada? Seems to be okay there now. Uh, Disappeared again. I don't think it's down to the Stabista. I don't know whether it's mechanical with the um with the tension on the tuning wheel, I don't know, but it does doesn't seem to be um doesn't seem to be that great. No, I've done that one, Rob. It's working fine unless you've messed it up. Long wire's fine. No issues with a long wire, sure. That's some um, Let's try a long wave then, let's see if we can find anything on the 252. It's going to be somewhere around about there. Thing is, it's not going to pick it up, is it? I'm going to have to couple to the aerial. Yeah, I have to couple to the aerial, won't I? Um, let's have a think. 
as we're connected into the shortwave area at the moment. If we want to go long wave, we need to connect in here on one of these and ground. Let's try that again then. This is moving around nicely, isn't it? It's that one there. some football coming through there I've got some football coming through there on about 225 is that Poland it might be Poland actually right time to go Lou again <clears throat> time to skip to the Lou Mrs. Mrs. Cruncher's back Mrs. C is back in the house Time to get rid of some stag. Right. So yeah, shortwave does tend to be drifting, but I think it's a mechanical thing with that um, fine tune. Because it's, it's sort of like loaded up on that bit of foam. It's loaded up on that bit of foam in underneath there, that. And, um, as you tune it, it um it moves that foam up and down. Now this this um long wave one is moving quite a lot, isn't it? It looks like the wax has just let go a little bit. But um it's definitely fixed now. You can see my repair there that I did on the ferrite. So it's now I wouldn't say good as new, but it's it is fixed. So, I mean, we could, let's just disconnect that, that's disconnected, disconnect that, let's turn it back on again. So, we've got loads of things interfering, let's pop that off. And that. That's better. It's a bit quieter, isn't it? Inside a membrane, but it is permeable. It is porous. 
principally comes in is the sound of the wind and the rain. The rain drums on the roof, it beats against the windows, it gurgles in the gutter over the door, and cascades along the stone in front. It is a thing that allows me to be in, really in, and really in touch with the weather and the rain, while at the same time sheltering me from it, and keeping me warm and dry as I write. Seems to be about there. I've certainly written about rain in fiction, in stories, and Just, um, in plays. But I'm also a reader. Cool. And I live in this place. That soda and iron knocks it to, I read knocks Irish it to six. A lot. I read Irish material. I would like to bring deep in. And the Irish material offers me insight and affirmation. Rain features, obviously, in Irish poetic material because it is a country where it rains a lot. And I go, oh, yes, I know that. These people testifying to the truth of the world in which I find myself living. Many years ago, I served on the um, Hennessy Prize Committee with Paula Meehan. Paula Meehan is a poet who lives in Dublin, and she gave me a book. She must have known about my interests, because the book that she gave me is called mm. Painting Rain, with a dedication to Carlo with a plum, love and peace, Paula, 2010, Hennessy Awards. And the last poem is a poem that has given me That's fine. a lot of pleasure. It is titled Coda, Pains Grey. This is how the poem goes. Time to paint rain. Day after day, I go out into it. Drizzle, shower, downpour. But not yet. The exact spring rain, warm and heavy and slow, each drop distinct and perfect. But I wait for by this water's edge, where some leaf of memory will come down with the flood, the river in spate broadening out to the sea. Let's pop the aerial buff on it. I love this poem. I love it because it's very clear about the connection between rain and memory. When I was in my grandmother's house, one of the rooms that I slept in, the room at the top of the stairs on the right, there was a copper beach about, I don't know, 30 yards away. and. The sound of the rain falling on the leaves of the copper beach. So that's on the long wire now. A very distinctive, almost tinny sound, which I learned quite early to identify. I knew it was quite separate from the sounds that I heard. Pretty good for Radio 4, room. really. And in the schoolhouse, where I now live, there is, outside our bedroom, a very small copper beach. And once again, as an adult, when it's raining. That sounds like five live. Yeah, 
committed a foul on Marcus Rashford. And it's a free kick to Manchester United inside their own half. So Martial, it didn't look too promising, did it, the other night when he, when he limped... Something's the interfering here still, but... I think that... That'll be Algeria there. That's Algeria, I believe. Yoddy Toddy. Cross tall from the Meridian Wave call. Yeah, could very well be. Let's try medium wave. Let's try medium wave with um, a bit of assistance. Is it that one or is it that one by the sound of it? Try that for medium wave. No medium wave. Thank you. 
in those full-time scores. Whistles have gone. And uh, it is France 34, Wales 14 in the Six Nations. And uh, on that map, the commentary is on sports. Sadly, there's next to nothing on um, on medium wave now. Thank you, Rob. No, I'm sure you haven't touched it. <laughs> You've done something's happened to it because it was working fine, but it could be your batteries. I mean, if you haven't tried your batteries, then you need to try that first before you start saying it's not right, do you? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with the SSB chip. How much range does a free range need to be free ranged? I don't know, Sean. It just needs to be wandering around the field. Inside the fine tuned white cog, there are two tracks. Is that so you can change the degrees of fine tune? Oh, I really don't know. I really don't know. No, it. it I think it is just the one, if it'll focus. Oh yeah, there is, there is two, so it could come out and go into that one, couldn't it? Which would give it, no, that doesn't work. That just jams it up. <laughs> it's got to go in that one. The other one just jams. To be fair, it's it's not doing a massive amount. It does give you a little tiny bit of adjustment. Very unusual way of doing it. But does seem to does seem to work, doesn't it? Very unusual. But interesting nonetheless. <clears throat> Bangers and mash, nice. I think we got curry for tea tonight. Because we were going to have curry the other night, but we didn't. For, no, no, we were going to have curry, but we decided to have McDonald's instead. Mackie D's on our way back yesterday. So it is working. I'm not sure why, why it's messing about, drifting about a little bit. Um, what could that be? doesn't drift on medium wave or long wave only on short wave and this is a little bit strange this little device i've got a bit of wax on it now that's not gonna not gonna help the situation but um yeah it's a very unusual yeah i've not seen it before either anthony it's very unusual it's just just moves this coil up and up and down it moves this loop of wire up and down this little tiny coil and it's not it's not very sturdy. It feels like it's sort of been bent over a little bit. I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much because it'll stop working altogether. But it might be that the, the bit of foam has started to perish a little bit. I don't know. It's not got as much bounce as it should have. But it, it is working. It is working. Let's try it again. Okay, what have I done now? What have I done now? 
I've unplugged it, that's why it doesn't work. connect it onto there It just disappeared then, and I didn't touch it. It's going to come back again. Me touching it is affecting it as well. AFC only works on FM, Sean. You madman. So that, that thing there is doing the fine tuning. It righted itself then, didn't it? When I knocked it. <laughs> so if I move this little bit of foam. Sean's favourite song there. Hi Ganesh, how are you? Yeah, that seems to have a big effect on it.
Sounds like the oscillator's dying a little bit, doesn't it? It, it just sort of dies, it, it just loses it all together. Unless the slug in it's very, um, that's what I'm looking for, very loose maybe, I don't know. Just gone totally, look. It is drifting. Check the joints in underneath there a minute. <clears throat> so it's in this area here. In around here. Right, let's get the eyes on and have a look around here. Need to stiffen the sponge up. Any elk just called the... Have all the cats been... I've done the... Um... 
I've done the caps, yeah. I'm just going to check the um, pads on this side. That one don't look great. And there's one that joint there doesn't look right at all. Let's just resolder that one. Just there where the tip of my finger is. That looks a bit dodgy. It's working. It's working, Christoph. We've got a bit of drifty drifty on um shortwave. Uh see so that one doesn't look great there. That one doesn't look great, that one doesn't look great, that one doesn't look great. But the Stabister's fine. Mr. Stabister is fine. Very careful of this speaker. I don't want this one um, getting thumbed at all. Better. It's better. These look all right, but then when you're dealing with an oscillator circuit, it can just be something so tiny. <sighs> Switch pins are favourite. It's a bit blobby, Graham. <laughs> I think it's that foam uh, foam ring personally. You can't do a lot about that. The old foam ring. Anyone else have problems with their foam ring? <laughs> eh, foam ring issues. It maybe just needs a bit of new a bit of new foam, a bit a bit more bounce, shall we say. Right, let's connect it back up again. Just see if that resolder, because there was a well, there was a dodgy joint there. We'll give it that. There was a dodgy joint there. It wasn't massively dodgy, but you know, a little bit dodgy. A touch dodgy. See if that's made any difference whatsoever. Let's zoom you out a bit. I got the lights off and the internet disconnected because it causes issues. On again. 
shortwave. It could be dodgy um, trimmer caps. It could well be dodgy trimmer caps. It's just like dies, doesn't it?
Yeah, I know what you're saying. The sponge isn't isn't brilliant, but then um, it should be all right. I mean, it's it's usable, but you've got to fiddle with it. as a SSB there. It is SSB. China. That is moving about a little bit too much, really. Yeah, I mean, that foam is very, very soft. That foam is very soft. It's not really enough to support that. Let's turn a bit of lightage up a bit. Graffiti pens. <laughs> Thanks, dear. And thanks very much for sending it on as well. It's a cracker. I want to get it back in the in the case and have a listen to it properly, because uh, having it like this is not how it's supposed to be. It's just just to test it. So uh, if we got time, what is how are we doing for time? We got a little bit of time. Let's see if we can get it back in the case and um, listen to it properly. Um, are we going to, uh, the trouble is I don't really want to put it back in the case because I've got to refinish the wood on the case. Um, I do need to put another sticky bit on there. I need to clean all the flux off the back where I've done all nastiness on it. So let's do that. Now I did see my brush earlier. It's a sponge, it's going to be. It'll be the spongy. Plus conditions as well. It's not really a great time at the moment for um, short wave because it's still quite light. So we really need it to be a bit darker for short wave, ideally. I think where this radio excels is on its FM performance, so that's really what I want to put to, to the test. The problem is, is up here in my workshop, it's not great for FM. 
I don't think the um, soldering made any difference, Sean, though. Just getting rid of the flux from doing the caps. doing too bad considering we had a dodgy stabista and a lot of dry joints and there may well still be more dry joints it's worth having a look through the oscillator circuit That's a job for another day. There's a lot of like, sort of muck on the bottom of the board here. It almost looks like flux that's dropped to the bottom here. Not sure what that is. Yeah, that's like old, old flux from years ago, from years gone by. Mm, I don't know what all that muck is down there, but it's gone there. Eh? A cardboard tube for inside the sponge. I think it's the bounce of the sponge that, that's doing it because um, if you imagine a, a sort of a donut shape, the sponge is like a donut. It's, it's about that big and it, it's, a, it's a donut and the wire is resting on top of the donut. So as, the, um, as you tune it, it's press, pressing on this donut and that's given it a bit of stability, but it's lost its bounce, so it's it's moving about quite a lot. I think that's what the issue is with it. So we've either got to come up with another bit of foam that's a bit stronger, or we've just got to leave it as is. That's a problem, I wonder if that'll come off. Yeah. So there was a sticky bit of foam on there that I need to replace. Let's leave that to sit for a minute there. Let's get one of Sean's blocky blocks. Let's see if we can prop that up. Um, what was I going to say then? Oh, I was going to show you the case. So, what the case needs refinishing. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but um, it's got like a, a soft sort of sheen on it. So, it's not glossy and it's not matte, it's in between really. Um, there's a little bit of scratch on that on it, but I don't think I'm going to get that out unless I run an iron over it that might get that out so that's the front the front's not looking too bad but the back is um it's got this bit of foam on it and again i probably need to replace that because you can see there's a there's a hole in it there i think this is what the speaker rests against but um this is the back and you can see there's a bit of mot mottling where it looks like it's had a little bit of, of rain or something on it, or I'm really not sure, but I need to get that off with some wire wool, I think, very carefully. Um, it is veneer, so I can't go too mad. I 
So yeah, I've got to refinish this. I don't really want to put them back on until I've refinished them. I don't want to be keep taking it on and off, if you know what I mean. It's just going to make it um, worse. Which way around that arm one that way. So yeah, judging by all the little little sort of dents and that in this bit, this this sat against the circuit board. So that's probably on the back, like that. No, that way up. And that bit of foam. Yeah, it looks like that bit of foam just goes against this back piece here. Just to stop it, stop the, the case buzzing. So we need to make sure that that's put back. So yeah, need to refinish those. Um, hopefully get that done in the week. Really depends. I haven't got a lot of time this week, actually. I've got... I've got <laughs> Two days worth of hospital this week, which is great stuff. So uh, that's going to mess up my um, my radio time a bit. So I have got uh, a radio I want to get get to grips with that uh, John has very kindly sent me in. Sneeze damage. <laughs> yes, it is my radio, Chris. Yes. Very kindly sent over to me by uh, Jir. All the way from Norway. <laughs> Just getting rid of the um, glue residue. And that strip. So yeah, I don't think there's much chance of getting another bit of foam. Um, I could possibly glue something up. Use the wire wall, collect some of the dust and see if it dissolves in acetone. What's, what's that, Anthony? What, what am I dissolving in acetone? The stag has gone. No, I know, Danish. It's not really scratched. It's only got some mottling on it from uh, where it's got damp. So I think that's going to come up absolutely amazing. I still don't know what finish to put on it. I was thinking, like I say, a, a, a clear satin coat of some description. Oh, the, okay, the door, door strip, the finish. So see if the finish dissolves in acetone. What you mean, give it a wipe over with acetone? Is that what you're saying, Anthony? <clears throat> I say I've got some furniture grade uh, wire wall downstairs, so that's what I was going to use on it. I would have had a go this week, but I just had my chance, really. So what we've got to do now is we've got to have a look and see if these caps were knackered or not. Was it worth changing them? Was it worth changing them? Let's put this speaker out of the way. Um, no, put 
that where the speaker was. Let's pop that back down over there at the way. Oh. <clears throat> and we've got our little stash of caps. First is the ESR meter. So let's start big with the thousand then, shall we? See what this one's like. Any bets on what the thousand microfarad? This is the second one we took out. Let's do them in order. This is the first one we took out. This one looked a bit mucky on the bottom, so. And it is strange, when you look at the board, there's, um, when you've got the capacitors, one hole's bigger than the other, and the leads are different size. <laughs> so this lead is much thicker than the ground lead. So 1,000 microfarads. Um, use the dust after you've used the wire wall. Craps, it could be. I have also got got in the um, two magnets for uh, two drivers even two drivers even yes for my um, earphones but I don't know where they are at the moment what have I done with those I was keeping them to one side but it looks like I haven't they're in amongst all the junk here at the moment this this room is shockingly bad needs uh it needs a good clean up this room at the moment how are we doing then 12 5, 1500 we've got a draw at 1500 njt is saying at 1200 i mean it's is that a fraco no that's not a frac or a fraco this is a Ducati. There you go, Sean. We've got a D Ducati capacitor. How about that? Ducati, and that one must be the same because that looks that looks the same there. Well, that looks like it's got the Siemens symbol on that one. But yeah, this one this one is actually marked. You can see that. You can see the. TI. Look at that. A Ducati capacitor. Should we do it? Let's do it. Let's get that. Oh, I didn't like that one very much. 1219, but fairly high ESR. Okay. So we've got some close here. Um, one, two, thirty, one, two. So that was 19 out. One, two, thirty is 11 out. It's going to be Mike Atlantis, isn't it? Not fast looking. <laughs> it doesn't go very fast. So I think that's Mr. Mike Atlantis, isn't it? Or, or my, or my, or my. Is my maths all over the shop? NJT's not far out. Yeah, it was definitely a Ducati. Now, there was, I think it was Mend It Mark did, um, did a Ducati radiogram, was it? It was a real fancy thing, but um, yeah, there you go. So I think that's um, Mr. Mike Atlantis. No, NJT, you you said 1,200, so you were 19 out. Mike Atlantis said 1,230, so he was 11 out. So I think it's Mr. Mike Atlantis, I think, but you weren't far off. So we've got another 1,000. Now, this is a Fraco from Germany. Fraco, Fraco. Fraco. 
So we've got another 1,000 microfarad. This was slightly higher voltage, 12 volts. That cap was knackered because we have got high ESR on that. But yeah, Ducati. I knew Ducati did make radios, but um, I didn't know they made components as well. Hello, Peter. So we're going again, Mr. Man Cave saying 1045. And my beer's all gone, which is a bit of a shame because that went down very nicely. Thank you. You can't count. <laughs> no worries, NJT. Have another go. Have another go. Do you, yeah, you could, you could be right there, um, Rich. Christ, Peter, what's that? That's a hundred Farad, is it? <laughs> Twelve hundred, hundred, hundred. Get the glare off it a little bit. Maybe that way. 11.50 this time, NJT, okay. Let's say a different brand of cap, not a Ducati anymore. ESR is good, 11.58, so that one's a bit better. Whoa, you're pretty close there. 11.50, you're only eight out. Oh, hang on. We've got 1161, Dave Rhodes, in with the lag. I think we've got to give Dave that because of the lag. It's got to be Dave, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's Dave, Dave, um, Dave Rhodes, pretty much. Unlucky again, AJ NJT just pipped pipped at the post. Look, <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Peter. Right, that's that one. So that one was okay, wasn't it? No issues with that, really. That's that one would have been fine. The first one not so good though. So this next one is another fraco. 470 this time. 470. How many volts? Is a 12 volt? 470. What do you reckon to this one then? 470. <laughs> well done, Dave. <laughs> And my power supply off actually. Oh, you got curry as well, net NJ two. I have two, but it's not. It's not going to go on till I go down. Apparently, very close though. Five four five five four one five hundred and ten point five, Derek. That <laughs> could be. That's getting very precise. Do you reckon it's gone high? I don't think this was in the amplifier circuit. I think that one was in the more in the IF stage. Was it? Or wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was up here. C 
five. I can't can't see that. C514 that is. Be interested to know whereabouts in the circuit these were really now. Um Gio sent me some great info here as well. Some uh, brilliant, very well copied info. Strange D501, is that a variety? Um, let's have a look at the diagram. It's going to be that way around, I expect. Let's say C514. Up here. How are we doing? It's going to be in the front end, that one, I think. C514, where are you? Where are you? Five one three or oh, five one four is in the power supply. And it's shown as five hundred microfarads on the diagram, but it's in the in the power supply. Hmm, strange as miles away. Positive connected to ground. Anyway, shall we see what it is? Are we all done? Five four six point zero five four six dead. Dave Rhodes five one nine five four five. Oh, it's got to be you this time, NJT, isn't it? It's got to be five forty for multi. That's NJT, you've got insider information. <laughs> you got there in the end. Oh. Stay there. Okay, what have we got up next then? There's not a lot of caps in this, so we've got these two 10 microfarads then. Now, these are Sprague. Again, another good good brand. So what's that one out of spec? Probably not far off. The worst one was that Ducati, really. So a 10 microfarad, 63 volts. We've got two of those. 10, 10, 10, 10. Too much information? <laughs> it definitely is NJT. Without, without a doubt, only one out, the closest yet. Curry and cider, very nice. 12.5 for Derek. Sprague, excuse me. A Sprague German? I'm not sure. You can still buy Sprague's now, can't you? Beep, 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 How are we doing? 
Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we going to go for it? Are you all done? Yeah, catch you later, NJT. What is that? 12.22. This could be a close one. I mean, someone's going to need to do some maths here. So Multi's 12.86. Timothy's 11.5. So... I th mm. Hang on, we've got Derek on 12.54. Got to be Derek then, isn't it? Surely. Dave Rhodes in with a late 12.78. I think it's Derek. Theo's on 12. Oh, hang on. No, Theo's 12. So Theo, Theo's 0 0.22 out. It's Theo. Expect an email and lots of dollars this week. <laughs> oh, nice one, Chris. It is Theo, isn't it? Yeah, I, my maths is shocking, Theo. Right, the same again then. So was that one okay? It was, wasn't it, really? That's not going to stop anything. I mean, the radio was working, to be fair to it. Uh, once I uh, sorted the dry joints out and done the stabista, it was it was working fine. It's still working fine. It's drifting a little bit on shortwave, though. But that's got to be down to that because... It's nice to have the fine tune, but I don't know what it should look like and what it was like from new, really. This is the question. Ideally, what I want to do is take that bit of foam completely out, have a look at and underneath it, check there's no dry joints or any, any issues like that. So let's go again then. Another, another one, 10 at 63 volts. Another Sprague. Sprack? I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, thanks for Tambley. <laughs> you win the spent cap. It's been it's been physically removed from the building by me. Another 10 then. Could use a bit of foam off a cleaning pad. Oh, like, um, yes, yeah, I, I, I'm with you there, Timothy. That's a good idea, actually. Like um, a Valida or something like that. I mean, it's not really perished, perished. It's lost its bounce a little bit. It has gone rusty. But I don't know how critical it is. What would happen if it didn't have the foam at all? It would still work, but it would be all over the shop. Eleven point two two. Exactly. Why not? It could be identical. It's an identical cap in a fairly identical part of the circuit. Could well be. Right, I'm going to push a button. Are you ready? <laughs> it's 12.22. You're exactly one out, Matamble. Um, so I'm confused as to where the cutoff was now. So I think we're down, down here. Yeah. 
It was a good try though, Derek. <laughs> Twelve point two two. So let me have a look down through the list. So so far it's Derek Tafman. Twelve point three four, I believe. Eleven point nine. Oh, someone's going to need to do the maths again for me here. Look. <laughs> twelve point six. Twelve point three three five four seems seems closer so far. Twelve point one five. Oh no. Multi's close as well. It's multi, I think, isn't it? It is. Pips you, Derek. You pips you at the post. <laughs> and the last one, then. The last one is this. Looks like a Siemens this time. And this is 2.2 .2 at 100 volts. A hundred then at two point two volts. Ooh. I was Italian, it sounded like um someone was talking outside then. Two point two, one hundred. Hundred and twelve? No, it's a hundred microfarads. Sorry, it's a hundred volts. It's a two point two, but it's a hundred volts. So you'll have to have another go there. <laughs> it's two point two. I don't think it's going to be a hundred and twenty-five. It's two point two microfarads, a hundred volts. I confuse you then, don't I? So have another go if you thought I said a hundred. It's two point two microfarads. Just me confusing you, wasn't it? Really? I'm easily confused. <laughs> Very easily confused. Need them to be time stamped, yeah. Normally Theo does me a dotted line underneath as a cutoff point. We'll have to have a tiebreaker, Dave, if, if it's if it's that accurate. Share the fame, yeah. We can we can have two winners. We can have two winners. Are we all done? Are we all done? Are we all done? Where's Mr. Rob Cross anyway? Is he gone for his tea? And Mr. Mancave's disappeared as well. Are we all done? Are we all done on 2.2? 2.1. You will do it next time. This is the last one, Theo. The last one. Let's do it then. Let's push a button. It's high ESR, but it's 2.55. So Derek's in at 2.5. And Mike Cass is also 
But then a 2.5, yeah, hang on, 2.35. It's got to be Mike Cass. And Derek. I think it's a draw. It's a draw. <laughs> Mike Cass and Derek Taffman. Got to be. That one's quite high ESR, although a lower, a lower value cap is always going to be a high ESR, but 3.4 is a little bit too high, really. We got another 2.2. I've only got a high value one there. So there we are. And the famous Duc Ducati cap. But I mean, that one's actually got 7.3 on it. Whether that means this radio is 1973, I'm not sure. Uh, have I tried the organic polymer electrolytics? No, I haven't, um, Bob. I have looked at them, to be fair. They are a fair bit more expensive, so... I wouldn't mind trying some. So, see, that one is marked 73. What any other date codes on any of this? West Germany. No, look at these. Now that says 7423, so is that 1974? That's the um, lower value Fraco ones. The spray, 7423, 7424. So is that 1974? And what about the Siemens? That's got 740574. Oh, so this is 1974 then. That would pretty much date it. I'm tempted to keep those caps with the radio actually. Yeah, I'm tempted to keep those with the radio because it is such a nice one. Might keep the original caps with it just, just as a date reference because I don't know if there's anything else on there that would date it really. It's got a Siemens output pair in it. I can't see any other um, date references on the radio, really. Um, so see if I can get the wood finished in the week, and then we can show it show it off finished. Let's see if I can get me a, a bit of sponge and cut off, cut up one of our um, dishwashing sponges. I'm just trying to see if there was any, any date codes on the service info. I'm pretty sure it said from 71, didn't it? So this may have been a slightly later model then. Hmm. Interesting. The word organic just means carbon. Yeah, car carbon is it's dead trees, isn't it, really? <laughs> really? Cut the cap in half, no! There he's back. He's back. Would you, you miss the capacitor? Bingo, Rob. Well, what were you doing? Well, what goes on? <laughs> um, whilst I have to look at, I've got some capacitors and a bridge rectifier in for a, a power supply that Les brought over. Let me go and get my um, my CPC uh, bag a minute. Let's have a look what, uh, what bits are in that and then we'll call it a day. 
so I've got to find a bit of foam and fit to that and also um, what have I done with that little box then so I've got a bit of, fit, bit of foam and see if I can finish the case off I really don't know whether to try the um, what am I trying to say whether to try the Danish oil on it, but I think it will darken it a little bit. There's a little tiny box with a load of load of capacitors. Ah, oh, there it is. That's because Mrs. Crutcher hid it, look. Okie dokie. Let's put some of something. This is this is hinted to go upstairs, but uh, what other components have I got here? I had some stuff came in from all sorts of places to file. Oh, that's got to be filed. Oh, that's got to be filed. Batteries. I've got some batteries for my thingy. Bob, I've got to stick a new battery in that. Some steel wool. I did have a load of um, fuses arrived because unless one had some 5 amp fuses here, right? And I didn't have any. So whenever I don't have anything, I always get it in. The next time you need it, which may be never, you've got it. I don't know what I've done with those. They might even be in this box. So if you remember back a couple Christmases ago, I did that um, really lovely Murphy console radio. And I actually bought this to um, finish it with. Clear varnish. Um, bought this off of Amazon. It just says acrylic, professional result, but doesn't say whether it's gloss or matte. It says fast drying acrylic clear varnish for surfaces of wood. Metal, aluminium, glass, stone, and various sorts of plastic. Most suitables are finished for acrylic and nitrocellulose lacquers. I'm pretty sure this is a gloss finish, but it doesn't actually say. Which is a bit annoying, isn't it, really? Because, I mean, this might be the stuff that like I'm going to have to um, perhaps do a, do a test run on another bit of, bit of plywood or something like that. Derek's off. Cheers, Derek. Catch you soon, mate. So that might do it. I don't know, but um, worth worth a test run. So this is me, me CPC box. They don't come in CPC boxes anymore, no? So I've bought some of these, some more of these GP... 12 volt batteries for me. In fact, I'll put one of those in in a second. Um, that's a bag. Yeah, just put loads of capacitors and a whopping great um, bridge rectifier. That's a monster, isn't it? That's a biggie because it's, I think, it's a 30 amp supply. So the bridge rectifier is actually um, shorter than it. So I've got a beefier one. I can't remember what, well, I think this might be a 50 amp. I'm not sure. So yeah, if you're there, Les, it's here. The bridge is in the house. Oh, there is, I've got some of the, some of the fuses in there, look. Five amp time lag. I should have some five amp normal ones as well, but I don't know where they are now. So yeah, I've stocked up on all the Vichy's. This is a 70 quid pack of capacitors, this is. 70 quid. I don't know why I've got these. What are these? A thousand at 25 volts.
grip well grip well bags so it looks like they came in it we've got a lot of these miniature caps for um see i've got some more of these back in stock again these are getting ridiculous money they do look nice if you're doing a restoration i suppose for someone and they want it looking as pristine as possible then these blue fichet ones are the part just five amp fuses i've got my fuse bag there somewhere so what are those 220 at 25 volts i've got a random single capacitor there a panasonic fc what is a bit random a 470 at 10 volts i've gone a bit mental on those i didn't realize i'd already ordered them 150 microfarad some of these miniature ones for the sony 2001 d's i haven't got a lot of those left either now some more of these what are these 33s i did order some 6.8s or 68s was it 6.8s i can't remember now. Yeah, 6.8. So, um, you can imagine how expensive this stuff is, can't you? It's crazy money now. Some more miniature caps. More miniature ones. What's this? 470 at 16. That's good. I've got some 16s. Some whopping great ones here. Now, oh, this is for that, um... I think this is for that power supply as well. well I've gone a bit mad on those 400 volts. <laughs> oh, oh well. They're one microfarad, I believe. What else have we got here? Some more miniature caps. Some more miniature caps. What's this thing here then? got two it's got two of something in it i'm not sponsored by cpc or anything i just i find them a bit better on price for these to be buying these then it's a 30 quid minimum order i think to get free postage it might be 15 i can't remember now they keep changing the goalposts ah, okay these are these um grain of wheat type bulbs little tiny I think these are five volt. I can't remember what I got them in for now. I got them in for something. I had them in my basket for something, so I thought I, I need, need those for something, but I can't remember what it is, so I'll get them anyway. <laughs> you can never have too many bulbs. So there you are. That's my little haul from um, CPC. But yeah, that's a bit of a monster um, rectifier, that. I used, to, I used to use RS a lot, to be fair. In fact, I used to get nearly all my stuff from RS. Because if I just needed half a dozen capacitors for a job, I could just order half a dozen capacitors. That's what they send. And I didn't get charged postage on it. It was free postage. They were dearer. Their parts were dearer than, say, CPC or Farnell. But you didn't have to pay postage, which made it cheaper for just small orders. And then they they whopped they whopped a postage charge on. I don't think I've used them since. So if you're watching Mr. RS, unfortunately, like people that don't buy in huge bulk, like myself and a lot of others, um, we can't afford to use you anymore. So shame, really, because they have got quite a big stock. I don't know where those other other fuses have gone. I don't know. And there's my um, my fuse fuse box. So I've got five. Are these actually marked? Because sometimes they're not actually marked as time delay. I think these should be. If I can get one out without them all coming out, they should have a T on them. I 
I can't see. This is a problem, so if I put them all in the same box, then... Yeah, so it just says 75AL250. Oh no, hang on, no, that's T5, okay, T5. Just bad, bad action. So time delay, 5 amp, okay. So they can just go straight in there, really. Cheers, Derek. Catch you soon, mate. So we've got normal. Actually, I'll put, I might put them in here. Got two lots of 5 amp by the looks of it. I've got 5 amp. I mean, those are nice 5 amp ones there because they're silver, silver and nickel, but I'll put the time delay ones in here. And the other ones can go in the other side. Right. Right. I'm glad the stream deck is working again and it's a bit gone a bit dark again, isn't it? It's gone a, gone a bit dark again. Hi Yas, how are you? Organic chemistry for chemistry honours degree. L. Just catch up with the rest of the chat. Both the directs have gone. You have a satin finish, I know. Get some satin. I'll try it on the inside of the back panel. Yeah, but it's not got the same finish on the inside, I don't think, um, Anthony. So multi set is just a clear finish. Ah, Les is still there. He's still there. Yeah, we've got the caps in, Les, and the um, bridge rectifier. Cat fund donations needed. Well, some of that was with the donations, because people have been um, doing cap donations for a couple of weeks now. So I've just got to get normal caps now. So I've got the miniature ones. I've got the electrolytic, the, the axials. I've got the axials and the miniature ones. I just need to restock my normal ones now. It's never ending, really. So there you are, people. So thanks again for the tips and the super chats, and thanks to my patrons. And uh, welcome to Jan. I, I think it's Jan, not Jan. So I think it's Jan from Sweden. So uh, welcome, Jan, if you're watching, mate. And thanks for becoming a patron. It was Sweden, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. So that's it for this week. I'm not sure what we're doing next week. I've got a, an amazing radio here that's coming from um, John John Turner, so we might be looking at that one. But uh, I'll be sticking out some photos. I might not get a chance tonight to stick photos out, but um, they will definitely be out on Patreon and um, channel memberships next week. So again, thanks to my channel members as well. And you've all got badges, those of you that are. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one. Hopefully I can get all my buttons sorted and uh, I shall see you next week. So bye for now.